Hello, my soccer universe. Um, yeah, I'm more or less ready to go to work again. Healthy enough. It was good to recover uh, this day as well. And now let's do the big rundown. Again, it is ahead of Monday games. I will reference this in this um, video, but um, I might not have them all in uh, by the time this... Um, I might have them in by the time this posts, but I don't have them yet as I'm doing this in the early evening of Monday. Um, it's also, you know, a lot of different things. Today I want to go through the main leagues. I want to also look who might come up from the second tier of these leagues. Because that might be interesting too for many. And I think um, next week I might want to do a rundown of, you know, add a few more leagues in. Today I'm really going to focus only on the top five. Because the only uh, big thing that happened is that Ajax... Is now level on points with PSV. Uh, we talked about that in the video yesterday. So I'm gonna leave out Eredivisie. There was nothing in Portugal happening, and the other leagues I haven't looked at in a while. We'll do this next time, uh, where I go through many, many, many of Europe's leagues. Um, today I wanna really focus on the top five leagues and the top five second leagues uh, to see who might be coming up from there. And then in two weeks from now, we're probably going to look also at some probabilities associated with it. Again, looking 538, we are very close to having the first champions crowned, um, which we have any, anyway been saying that those teams will become champions in the next few uh, weeks. So nothing too surprising there, but it might be interesting to see how is it developing in England, how is it developing in Germany. Uh, those leagues are still very much open and then we can also look at Portugal and uh, the Netherlands. Okay, I was about to do all of this in one video and decided it's just too big. Um, I'm wearing Liverpool because they might be one of the bigger winners this weekend. I think the biggest one, if you ask me, is Bayern uh, for Ajax, but Liverpool I think is also a winner of this week, at least for now, the way the game went. I would say let's start, let's go alphabetically and we'll start in England at the Premier League. Uh, by the way, I'm using um, updated uh, graphics. I use it now from soccerstand.com. Uh, first, I used an Austrian TV website, but they don't have as many leagues as I would like to have. Uh, and I think these are as informative, maybe it was not as nice, but I think they do the trick. So in the Premier League, we had this weekend uh, Southampton losing at home to Liverpool um, 3-1. I think this was basically the uh, bigger uh, result there. Then we also had um, Newcastle losing at home to Crystal Palace, Huddersfield losing at home to Leicester 4-1, um, and Bournemouth at home to Burnley 3-1. So the Sunday game between Everton and Arsenal kind of broke the trend uh, with a 1-0 uh, win for Everton, which was, in, it was in a, a sense very interesting to see how little Arsenal was showing. It was kind of, they had a big chance of moving up ahead of Tottenham again, albeit with a um, game more and now Chelsea can move ahead of them. So let's look at the standings uh, again with a game more played. Liverpool is in first place, two points ahead of Manchester City and we know that the one game in hand is really the Manchester Derby. So a lot of riding on that one and I honestly would have loved that this one was played um, a little bit sooner because now uh, United is tending this direction. Uh, Tottenham at the moment is in third place with 64 points, Arsenal now 63, Chelsea also 63 and tonight Chelsea is playing West Ham so uh, gonna be interesting what will happen there. Again it's very uneven standings uh, because of all the FA Cup postponements and whatever. Um, I said it last week, I really don't like that. Uh, Manchester United also 63 points, so it's very... Uh, 61 points, sorry, I uh, lost the line. Very, 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 very tight. When we see the form, Manchester City has been winning everything. Liverpool is just a draw, but has wins. Tottenham maybe is back on the winning track. Yeah, you can judge the uh, form curve by yourself uh, from the graph here. Uh, 
Best of the rest at the moment is Leicester, but with a game more, Wolves played, of course, the semi-final against Watford, so uh, there's a little bit of uh, changes there. Everton moves with the win up to 46, and Watford rounds out the top half of the table at 40, with also 46 points. Uh, the bottom half of the table at the moment is West Ham, uh, 42, Crystal Palace, 39, uh, Bournemouth, 38, and Burnley, 36. And if you look at the form, Burnley has had now two wins in a row. Uh, Newcastle, 35. Seems to be safe. You know, relegation zone, I think, starts more or less at Burnley. Um, Brighton has 33, but they have games in hand. Southampton has 33. As I said, it looks still all right because there's the drop to 28 points to Cardiff. I think Cardiff uh, looks like the team being relegated. Fulham 17 and uh, Huddersfield 14 are already relegated. Uh, by the way, uh, Liverpool already has qualified for the Champions League group stage. That's also nice thing uh add, add, add it on let's see so with, uh, since we talked rele relegation let's also see who might come up and you know england is one with the all the playoffs which might make things a little bit more complicated but at the moment we have norwich seems to be uh pretty safely back in the premier league after i think a longish absence 84 points at 7 points ahead of Sheffield United with 77 and Leeds United with 76 points. I think those two will make the second uh, uh, promotion spot. Uh, will be interesting whether it will be Sheffield or Leeds. Then uh, in the playoffs, um, West Brom seems to be a playoff contender. Aston Villa 63, Bristol 62, Derby might have a slight chance. Um, looking at recent form and also with uh, games in hand, I'm not sure if Middlesbrough will get in there. So, um, and Nottingham probably also, yeah, it, it might be possible. Nottingham, Preston and Hull, I think those are the ones that could get in there. Uh, but yeah, realistically, it will be four out of... Four of Sheffield, Leeds, West Brom, Aston Villa, Bristol, or Derby. Um, West Brom is probably safely in there. We say so. So let's say two out of Aston Villa, Bristol, and Derby. So it will be interesting to follow that one. We also had the FA Cup. I mean, uh, semi-finals. We had Manchester City beating Brighton one nil. Uh, kind of a tightish game. I mean, uh, Kyle Walker sent off could have uh, spelled maybe doom there. On the other side, I think it was then in the end pretty safe. And then we had Watford winning in uh, extra time, uh, overtime, 3-2 against Wolves after being down 2-0, which was an amazing game. I think one of the best of the weekend. I have to say the weekend was weird because there were a lot of really good games on Saturday and then there almost nothing on Sunday, which was a little bit of a bummer, to be honest. So after England comes France. Let's look at League 1, um, the results. If you... Now, let's go from from, from the beginning. Bordeaux, must say, we talk about 2-0 uh, for Bordeaux, with a red card, actually, for Bordeaux. Uh, Lyon-Dijon uh, 1-3. That's kind of a surprise. Lyon had two home defeats this uh, weekend. Nîmes-Caen 2-0, Guingamp-Monaco 1-1, Angers-Rennes 3-3, Amiens-Saint-Étienne 2-2. Two, two. Then yesterday's games, L Toulouse, Nantes, 1-0, uh, Reims, Lille, 1-1, Nice, Montpellier, 1-0, and Paris Saint-Germain against Strasbourg, 2-2. Two, two. I saw the highlights, and it's not the goals that are the highlight. The miss of the season, the century, the past two centuries. Uh, by um, Chupa Mutong, however, let's uh, check. Yeah, Chupa Muting, Mutong, Muting. Uh, who scored already the first goal for PSG. Uh, was a shot in, he tries to pull it over the line. Uh, no, he actually makes the best defensive move ever. The goal is wide open. If he doesn't touch it, the ball goes in. He touches it on the line with the inside of his foot and it goes on the post and out. I mean, crazy. This is almost impossible to not get in. I actually thought that the first goal that he made, that was not that easy. Uh, and this one he completely botched. I think his PSG career is safely over. PSG with a win would have... I'm not saying. Maybe that's too strong to say. But anyway, I mean, it's it was really bad. Um, 
I gotta say, with a win, PSG would have clinched the championship. Now it's only 2-2. Strasbourg actually got the lead. Then it was only PSG uh, missing chances, but they were playing without Cavani, Mbappé, Draxler and so on. Draxler and Mbappé came on. Mbappé had one of his crazy runs again. But the ball didn't go in, and this is almost typical PSG. It's just that the competition in Ligue 1 for them is not as strong. And therefore, they can maybe live with uh, wasting chances like that. It was the first draw at home for PSG, and we have the following standings. PSG as, as well. They play now against Lille in the next round. One point is enough for them. Uh, PSG 81, Lille 60, 61, Lyon 56. I think Lyon will have a hard time getting the fixed Champions League spot. And also depends on the Europa League. Um, if the Europa League winner qualifies for Champions League, then Lyon goes into the playoff. So that's a conditional uh, Champions League spot for them. Santa Tien 50 uh, looks now better than Marseille, who had a pretty bad run now with 48, Reims 47, Nice 47, Montpellier 45. Strasbourg, I think, has a has, um, ticket through the League Cup. Um, let me check that quickly. I'm interested in that now. Yeah, Strasbourg won the League Cup 1-0, so they have their Europa League ticket already punched. Hence, only fourth place will make it in the Europa League. So, uh, realistically, Saint-Étienne, Marseille, Reims, Nice, with Saint-Étienne holding a distinct advantage. Montpellier might get in there. Uh, in no man's land, Rennes, Nîmes, uh, Angers, Bordeaux, a base basically everyone until Amiens. And then it is Dijon. I think Dijon has a really hard time getting, getting out of the crown, Gurgaon. They are all more or less level at 24 and 23 points each, but they are seven points off the pace um, of getting out of the relegation zone. I think that might be too much, despite some recent wins and despite Amiens not winning a lot, but honestly, I think it's those three. Let's look at the second Ligue 2 in France. I said I'm going to look at the second leagues. Uh, just at the standings where we are at the moment. Metz is bound to make a comeback. Six points ahead of Brest. That looks also good at 59. And then we have, yeah, they all, all also have a promotion system. Paris, Lorient, and Troyes are the three teams um, that are currently in that promotion spot. And look, safe is so. 53, 53, 52, Lens, 49, Orléans, 48. Might have a chance, but I think it's those three that uh, probably get the last uh, promotion spot. I have to check the exact way how this is done, but I guess uh, Lorient will play Troyes, and then the winner plays against Paris if it stays this way. Now we go to Germany uh, with the big result, um, of course, the 5-0 win of Bayern over Dortmund. Other games that we had is we had um, Mainz-Freiburg 5-0, uh, craziest game of the entire season. I think um, the shot statistic read 8-17 to in favor of Freiburg. Freiburg had 70% of the ball. They lose 5-0. At the moment that uh, Mainz made their first goal, uh, that was their first shot or shot on goal. The first three shots on goal went in, more or less. So one of the craziest games uh, of the entire season, I would say. Wolfsburg, Hannover, 3-1. Stuttgart, Nürnberg, 1-1. I think that was a slightly contentious equalizer for Stuttgart. Schalke, Frankfurt, last-minute win for Frankfurt. Um, 2-1 for Frankfurt. Hertha Düsseldorf, that's a kind of a surprise. Düsseldorf really continues a great form, winning 2-1 in Berlin. Leipzig completely outclassing Leverkusen uh, in their stadium. 4-2 Bayern, 5-0, we don't need to talk about that. Hoffenheim also putting Augsburg in some trouble, winning away from home 4-0. A lot of away wins this uh, weekend in the Bundesliga. Just And if a team won at home, they won by a lot, 5-0. Other than that, it was all... Ah, the 3-1 of Wolfsburg. And then Gladbach against Werder, 1-1. That was an uh, interesting game where Gladbach probably should have won. Uh, if you look at the standings now, just a second, we have now Bayern in front. 64 points, 63 only for Dortmund. It seems tight, this 5-0 is a huge, huge, huge result. Um, Next Bayern plays Düsseldorf, Dortmund plays at home to Mainz. 
I just don't see it. I mean, this must have given Bayern so much uh, positive energy. I cannot see anyone but Bayern winning that. Champions exposed. I think Leipzig and Frankfurt kind of look safe now because Gladbach had a really bad run uh, as, as of late with 48 points. Wolfsburg 45, um, Hoffenheim 44, Bremen 43, Leverkusen 42. Um, yeah, those have a chance. I think uh, Düsseldorf, they only care about not being really relegated and they are very safely there. 37 points, Hertha 35, Mainz 33. Um, I think Freiburg is also safe at 32 and then Schalke 26, Augsburg 25, Stuttgart 21. It doesn't look good for Stuttgart, but you know, with some um, good results, which they didn't have of late, there might be something in there, but I think Schalke and Augsburg look kind of safe-ish although not great in any way, especially if you look at Schalke, they have been trending down. Nürnberg, 17, Hannover, 14. I really don't see those uh, teams going anywhere as much as I... I personally like Nür Nürnberg. I, if you would ask me between Nürnberg and Augsburg, I'd rather have Nürnberg in there, but just, just because of greater tradition. But that's not, not going to happen. And Nürnberg is always a little bit of a mess. I don't know uh, as of late, but I, I remember from the late 2000s, uh, early 2000s and late 90s that it was always a little bit messy in Nürnberg. Um, Zweite Bundesliga, so the second league. Uh, Köln pretty safely uh, in first spot. Hamburg 51 also looks good. Both teams have a game less at hand. And then uh, Union Berlin is on the relegation spot. I actually would even favor Stuttgart over Union Berlin. Paderborn, Holstein, Kiel, St. Pauli, maybe, Heidenheim, maybe, and I think then that I call it also the teams that have a chance of going to the playoffs. I think the two promoted teams will be Köln and Hamburg, and those are two teams that belong up there, absolutely belong into the Bundesliga, and I hope they will stay there for a long, long, long time. That's my personal prayer preference. You might disagree with it, but I feel strongly about that. Serie A. Boy, there was a lot of crazy stuff hap 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 happening in Serie A. And it's mainly the snail's race for the fourth qualifying spot. That really is crazy. We have actually an evening game um, tonight between Bologna and Kiev, where Bologna actually could uh, get out of the relegation zone, as we will see. Uh, results with Parma Torino, a goalless draw. Juve Milan 2 1, still hurting all over that one. I repeat it, Milan. Look to be, for most part of the game, the better team. But Juventus is just deadly. And that's why they become champions. They're not quite there yet. They're not quite there yet. But by next weekend, I'm quite sure that they will be. Roma wins at Sampdoria 1-0. Uh, Frosinone beats uh, Fiorentina at home. I mean, is, Fr is Frosinone now making the uh, miracle that I think Benevento had uh, two, year, two seasons ago? Udine beats Empoli 3-2, which are in a spectacular first half. Cagliari Spal 2-1. Spal is also a very uneven team. Lazio Sassuolo 2-2. That's what I'm saying. The race for fourth is really bad. I mean, no one really wants to uh, put a stamp on it. The form team seemed to be Atalanta, but they got only a 0-0 draw at Inter, which probably was the just result. And then Napoli Geno only 1-1. Napoli, I think, puts all their eggs in the basket for the... Uh, Europa League now. I That's the feeling that I have. Coming up, the big game, I think, is between Milan and Lazio. That will be... It's a must-win game for both teams, I gotta say. Uh, if you look at the Atalanta, will play at home to Empoli, so that's probably three points. So those two teams really need to win, and the Roma is playing Udine. So gonna be interesting. Let's look at the standings, actually. Um, Juve... 84 points, Napoli 64, uh, Inter 57. I think those three look kind of safe. Um, and now the, what I said, the snails race. Milan 52 ahead of Atalanta 52, only because Milan won the head-to-head. -head. Um, I always have been saying dark, di direct duel because it's a direct translation from German. It's head-to-head -head and I punched this in my head. I hope I will remember that. Roma 51, however, Lazio has a game in hand against Udine. They could get 52 and then they're also right in that mix there. So then it would be a three-way tie and I'm not sure how Milan is doing there, but I think they, got, they wouldn't be too bad. I'd, I have to look at the games between Atalanta and Lazio. 
So yeah, we have Milan next match against Lazio, uh, Atalanta, Empoli, Roma plays against Udine. Torino uh, may be in there, but I don't think so uh, at 449. And that's that's where I call it for the Europa League spots. Uh, Sampdoria, I don't think, has any um, chance anymore, as does Fiorentina. Bottom half, Sassuolo, 36, Cagliari, 36, Parma, 34, Genoa, 34, Udine, 32. I'm looking where relegation zone starts. Maybe at Udine, Spal, 32. I don't think Parma and Genoa will be implicated into Although, if I look at the form, it doesn't look that great. But, yeah. Um... Empoli, then Bologna 27, as I said, if they win, they can leapfrog Empoli. Uh, Frosinone 23 and Kiewis or should be done and dusted. I think it's not quite yet, but um, very soon they will be out of it. Let's see the promotion. That's also interesting because Italy has a really crazy promotion system where the top two get promoted and the next six have a playoff where first the bottom... Uh, Four of those uh, make one spot in the, for a promotion final. Uh, standings. So we have Brescia at the moment leading with 57 and Lecce 54. And when I look at it, those two teams are probably the ones that will go to Serie A. And then the playoff. The, at the moment, the fixed spots are for Palermo and Benevento. Palermo has a game in hand, especially on Lecce. There are six points. So maybe Palermo can get in that discussion as well uh, if I look at it so let's see the last game the one uh, yeah 3-2 or Pescara yeah, we'll see how it will go uh, so Palermo Benevento at the moment Verona Pescara Cittadella and Perugia would be in the playoffs uh, Spezia is also in the discussion I don't think that Ascoli will get in there so again there's one team on the outside looking in. Uh, will be interesting how to go. But Brescia and Lecce, potentially Palermo, look safe. Uh, look uh, bound, Serie A bound. Uh, I don't know about the other teams. I personally would also love if Verona could come up there. But, you know, they also had, had their troubles. And maybe we get a Veronese derby in Serie B next season. And that leaves us with the last league. And this is, of course, La Liga. Results uh, from the weekend. We had Espanyol winning at Girona 2-1. Catalan derby. They had two Catalan derbies now in a row. Real Madrid Eibar was hard work, but they won 2-1. Rayo Valencia 2-0. I said uh, just the day before that Valencia is the ill-formed team and they really seem Champions League bound and then they lose to Rayo. I uh, just don't get it. Barcelona, great game 2-0 against Atletico Madrid. Still, if uh, Diego Costa would not have lost his mind, I think this could have been an even better game. Alaves Leganes 1-1. One, one. Alaves is kind of trending so-and-so. Um, Getafe Bilbao, so Getafe makes another big punch uh, getting in. And Sevilla makes gets another win at Valladolid, so Sevilla might be back in the discussion. It's so crazy. It's a similar... Uh, it's not as bad as in Italy, but there's also some very inconsistent teams uh, going for this fourth Champions League spot. Levante Uesca 2-2. Uesca had, has actually a good run um, as of late, Celt, at least at how it seems. And Celta beats Real Sociedad 3-1, which also, that's a team threatened by relegation. And Betis against Villarreal 2-1. Uh, let's look at the standings. Barcelona more or less champions, I don't think. Anyone is doubting that it's now 11 points ahead of Atletico Madrid. Yes, it's not a done deal yet, but it looks pretty uh, pretty good. Atletico Madrid 62, Real Madrid 60. Uh, pretty safe, those three are going to the Champions League. And now let's look at the race for fourth. Getafe 50, Sevilla back 49. And Valencia must kick themselves because they're now at 4 46 with this uh, loss. If had they won, they would be 49 and right in the thick of it. Alaves 45, probably is also uh, still in discussion there. Bilbao might creep in, but now that they uh, lost, not so sure anymore. Uh, same goes for Betis 43 and Real Sociedad at 40. Uh, let's look at the bo bottom half because this is as enticing. Um, I think the relegation zone starts in number 14, Girona. Espanyol with that win over Girona basically 
more or less rid themselves of um, tr uh, of trouble. And if if you look at this, Giron has 34, Levante 33, Celta de Vigo 32, Valladolid 30, Villarreal 30, Rayo 27, Uesca 24. There is, I think everyone still has a chance. And if you look at Uesca, they had now two draws in a row, and the one loss was a very unlucky one, the last one to uh, Real Madrid. They're going somewhere, I think. So uh, that's going to be interesting. Rayo also has been playing quite good. Villarreal is so-and-so. It's a little bit up and down, and yeah, they're still in the uh, Europa League as well. So it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I think this is the most interesting relegation battle. And I'm going to look forward to the probabilities um, once we get to those. And let's finish with the second league, La Liga dos. Osasuna 64, Granada 61. Osasuna looks pretty safe, Granada not quite yet. And there's again a promotion playoff. At the moment it's Albacete at 60. They have a chance to get uh, to catch Granada. Then Malaga, Deportivo La Coruña and Mallorca. Oof, all names that... Uh, you would like to also see up there. Uh, Cadiz might have a small chance, but it looks like those six, well, you know, you never know. Cadiz, Gijon, maybe Oviedo still could go to get, get, get in there. But also Suna looks to be the team that comes back and then one of Granada and Albacete at the moment. Well, that was... I hope you enjoyed this travel through the five big leagues in Europe. Um, let me know. What you would like to see in this um, weekly uh, review, I honestly, I want to change it up every time a little bit. Uh, this time I said, let's look also at the second leagues and then um, take it from there. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.